Hi kids, today we will be seeing the last video of chapter 12 reproduction in plants and today we will be dealing with the topic fertilization. Okay? Now remember what you studied in third video, did you all study that video? Okay, you remember the different parts of a flower? What is the male reproductive part of a flower called as? Yes, it is the stamen. The female reproductive part of a flower is called as the pistil. In the male reproductive part, okay, in the stamen, there is a portion, there is a part called as the anther. Inside the anther, you will be getting the pollen grains. And within the pollen grains, you will be getting the male gametes. Okay, similarly, in the female, in a pistil, in the female reproductive part called as pistil, there is a part called as the ovary. Inside the ovary, you will get tiny structures called as ovules. Within the ovules, you will get the female gamete or the egg. And you studied that the male gamete will fuse with the female gamete to form a new cell. And that new cell you call it as the zygote. Okay, now children, what is fertilization? What is today's topic? It is fertilization, no? Actually, the process which you studied right now, that means the process of fusion of a male gamete with a female gamete is what is called as fertilization. See, it is a fusion of a, sorry, it is a fusion of a male and a female gamete. Okay, this is what is called as fertilization and the newly formed cell or the product of fertilization is called as the zygote. What will happen to the zygote? The zygote will slowly develop into an embryo within the seed, isn't it? Ovule will become the seed. Remember we studied the inside the ovule, this uh, zygote, the, the zygote will develop into an embryo. See, and what will happen to this embryo? Embryo will develop into a small tiny plant, into a seedling. Okay, now this is the diagram of fertilization. See, the pollen grains are coming and falling on the stigma. What do you call this process as? Remember all these old things which we studied in the previous videos? You call the process of transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma as? Yes, pollination. So after pollination, pollen grain will come land on the stigma. Once the pollen grain is coming and landing on the stigma, what will happen? The pollen grain will slowly germinate. A small tube will come out of the pollen grain. Can you see the small tube coming out? See the small tube will be coming out of the pollen grain. Okay, this tube will grow towards the female gamete. You can see it in the next diagram. The pollen tube is growing. This is the pollen tube. It is growing down as and it reaches the ovum. What do you mean by ovum? Ovum is the female gamete. Another name for female gamete is ovum. Okay. So, it will be reaching the female gamete and it will fuse. The male and the female gamete will fuse. Inside the pollen grain, can you see this dot? This is the male gamete. Inside the, see, inside the female uh, ovary, inside the ovule, you will be getting the ovum or the female gamete. So, these two dots are the male and the female gamete. Okay, when the pollen tube is developing, this male gamete will come through the pollen tube. Finally, it will come and fuse. You can see, see, two dots are here. So, these will fuse together to form a zygote. It is a fusion product of fertilization. So, this is the diagram of fertilization. Hope it is clear. Next, we are going to see what happens in a flower after fertilization. So, right now I told you that zygote is the product of fertilization, isn't it? After fertilization, the male and the female gamete will fuse together to form a new cell called as a zygote. Once the zygote is developed, some changes will occur in a flower. Now, what are these changes which are going to see? What are these uh, changes which are going to occur in a flower? The things are, see, the petals, the petal, sepal, stamen, then the stigma, style, everything will just wither off. 
okay they'll just wither off they'll just drop off from the flower they'll get separated from the flower and what will happen this ovary this part this ovary see what is happening to this ovary the ovary is becoming swollen the ovary is growing okay the ovary becomes swollen and finally the ovary will develop into a fruit so this is the fruit the ovary is developing into a fruit now what will happen to the ovules which were there inside the ovary the ovule see it is becoming the seeds the ovules become the seeds of the fruit okay children and where can you see the zygote inside the seed inside the seed there will be a small embryo okay there will be a small zygote okay now we will see the same once more so what will happen after fertilization the petals sepals stamen then style stigma everything will wither off okay the ovary will develop into a fruit the ovule will develop into a seed the zygote will develop into an embryo and where can you see the zygote zygote will be inside a uh, the uh, zygote is inside the seed the zygote is developing into an embryo the fruit ovule is inside the ovary understood so over uh, ovary inside the ovary you can see the ovule inside the ovule you can see the zygote so this happens after fertilization in a flower next so finally after fertilization uh, a seed is finally formed isn't it you studied right now that the ovule will develop into a seed now what will happen to the seed inside the plant the seed has to be somehow dispersed it has to move away from the parent plant isn't it the seed will be inside the fruit this seed has to move away from the parent plant to new places so that they can go and germinate there into a new plant now why should the seed move away from the parent plant can the seed grow near the parent plant why the seed is moving away actually have you ever thought just think about a big mango tree okay during every mango season lots of mangoes will be there on the tree if all those mangoes were to fall on the near to the parent plant everything all the mangoes are coming and falling below the same tree all the seeds are growing into plantlets or into seedlings all the small seedlings are going to grow into big big mango trees under the parent tree is it uh, will it happen like that huh? what will happen all those small ones will be destroyed only a few will germinate okay why because there will be a severe competition between all the small plants which grow in the same area they will compete among them for what all things for water for minerals then for sunlight for carbon dioxide for everything there will be a severe competition so in order to avoid this competition the seeds have to go and fall in different places they have to be dispersed from the parent plant okay so that there is no competition between the small plants which are growing out from a seed so why seed dispersal in order to avoid severe competition okay so what are the advantages of a seed dispersal number 1 it will prevent the competition between the plants between the small plants and it will enable the tiny plants to invade new areas and to grow there they can go to new places and you can grow there okay now as we studied about pollination there were different agents for pollination no similarly there are several agents for seed dispersal also okay seed dispersal can uh, occur the, the process of dispersing the seeds can occur either by wind by water then some animals can help in this process okay so they are called as the agents of seed dispersal now we will see one by one which are the different agents and we will see a few examples of certain plants which are dispersed through such agents okay children yes number 1 the first agent is wind okay now if the seed has to be taken away by wind 
the seed should be very lightweight just think about a coconut seed can it be taken away by wind no never okay so the seed should be very small it should be very lightweight it should have certain some seeds will be having certain hair like structures over it you can see it here see they are having certain hair like structures so that it, they can be easily carried away by wind the some seeds will be having wing like structures like this okay so with you using all these structures they can be easily taken away by the wind okay the certain examples of plants which are transported which are dispersed by wind are drumstick maple madar sunflower etc so these are seeds which are dispersed by wind second one is by water okay those seeds which are dispersed by water should have certain uh, floating structures on them certain structures with which they can float on the surface of water certain fibrous materials and all on it or else what will happen these seeds will just go down they will just be immersed in the water okay and they will not germinate so coconut coconut and all they are having fibrous outer covering no with these fibrous outer covering they can easily float on the surface of water okay just see a diagram is given here seed dispersal of coconut okay so there the agent of dispersal is water number 3 certain seeds where the agent of dispersal is animal when the agent of dispersal is an animal okay the seeds should have special structures like hooks spines and all can you see these seeds they are having spines some structures some seeds will be having hook like structure so that they can attach cling on to the body of the animal and they can be taken away to different places the first one is the seed of xanthium and the second one is urana seeds xanthium and urana both are dispersed by animals next is fruit dispersal by a mechanism called as bursting the plant itself will develop certain mechanisms for seed dispersal the fruits when they are mature they will just burst and when they are bursting with pressure the seeds inside them will be dispersed to different areas their seeds will go and fall in uh, long uh, it will it will not fall near the parent plant it will go and fall somewhere else okay such seed burst such a fruit bursting techniques you can observe in plants like balsam see this is balsam can you see the fruits so sorry the seeds are dispersed when the fruit is exploding the seeds are going and falling away in far away places similarly castor castor is the second example here also the seed is bursting the uh, fruit is bursting and the seeds are going out of the fruit they will be taken to new places because of that pressure created explosion pressure created by the fruit so is this clear children so with this we are winding up this chapter this chapter is over hope you all understood this chapter well hope you all studied the previous videos properly okay so have a nice day thank you children bye stay safe